Where you live may be killing you. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Winning. I mean, you are being so dramatic. Dramatic? Me being dramatic? You literally paused for a vector. That was a medical contemplation pause. Okay, and you lowered your voice. I was just trying to explain it. That's called gravita. Yeah, and you, you might as well have whispered, maybe killing you. Oh, okay. Would you like it better if I said, hey, your postal code kind of influences your cardiovascular health, maybe? I think that'd be more accurate. Not true, not true. Because we are going to be talking about things, all right? Things, factors that affect your health more than what you eat. Things that affect your health more than how much you move, or things that affect your health even more than if you have a couple of glasses of wine every night with dinner. Okay, so the social determinants of health. Yeah, these are the social determinants of health. The SDH, not STD. You should be careful with those. Okay. Those can be dangerous. SDH, social determinants of health. And we didn't just make this up, okay? Nope. This is defined by and explained by the World Health Organization. The WHO. The World Health Organization. Yeah, the WHO. The World Health, oh, WHO. I see what you're doing there. A little bit of uh, acronym humor. Yeah. No time for that. No time for that. Okay. The World Health Organization broadly defines a social determinants of health as the things like where you're born, where you grow, where you live, where you work. Yep. Okay. Um, your access to money, access to jobs, um, access to resources, access to power. And those factors actually can affect your health more than your genetics. Right. Okay. okay. So... Let's go through them. Let's okay. go through these social determinants of health. Okay, and these are important. You, you might think, oh, this is a boring topic. You know, this is a public health textbook, boring stuff. But keep in mind, these things affect your health more than a lot of things that you decide what to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, number one. Where you live. Where you okay? live. Basically, your postal code. Okay, or your zip code if or you're in the U.S. Or whatever the or other your, things are. Whatever else. code <laughs> is, your, your codes I don't know what it is. affect your <laughs> life expectancy. Okay, how? Okay, well, because it affects the environment you live in, the housing you have, the pollution. That's sure, if there's, if there's a park around, okay, if there's crime, whatever. Extreme example. Okay. Let's say you live in a region or country where the neighboring region or country says, hey, I want part of your region or country. Yeah. So they attack. Right. Now you're in a war zone, yep. and that's obvious, right? I feel like we have a lot of that now, right? There now. is it's a lot of that good. going on, and that affects your lifespan, health span. Obviously, let's put it, let's, let's, let's really define it. So right now, 2026, yes. they've estimated that the country with the longest lifespan is Monaco, 86.7 years. And the country with the lowest lifespan is Nigeria, Yeah, somewhere in the 50s. Yeah, 55, I think it was. Okay, that's so 30 years, just by where you live. Where you live. Okay, and I mean, we've talked about this before. We've talked about the blue zones and things like sure. that, where people seem to live longer. But even within a country, within the same nation, there can be a huge discrepancy. Sure. And uh, I think some people would even say within cities. Within cities, yeah. Okay, if you look within, uh, well, within within states, if okay. you look like at somewhere in Louisiana, in yes. New Orleans, okay. their life expectancy is somewhere in the 70s. Yep. Look at San Francisco, their life expectancy is like in the low 80s. Is it because the Golden State Warriors have been so good for so long? Probably part, part of it. Part of it. Um, or even within the same Steph state, Curry has some even, Canadian roots. Really? Yeah. Oh, dad, that's right. His dad, his dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what's his life expectancy? Well, and then if you look within New Orleans even, depending on what area in New Orleans, that life expectancy can vary by five or six years too. Right. Okay. All right, and then, well, we can talk about Canada and the U.S. Yep. Obviously, we're not the top. We're in the top 20, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, but there is a difference there. We'll touch on that later. Right. But that is sort of where you live and how it can affect your life expectancy. Okay. I like it. Okay, number two. Number two we is is talked about. It's not fair. It's not nice to talk about. We hate talking about this fact, but your income and level of education okay. right, so directly income. correlates directly correlates with your life expectancy. Money talks. ACDC song. Money talks. BS walks. Spinal tap. I like it. They're coming up with a new one. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you have more Was money, that Bob Reiner. Spinal tap. I think it might have been. God rest his soul. Yeah. Big loss. Yeah. Um, so yeah, increased money means live longer. Right. Not fair, but true. 
Yeah, and I think we kind of knew this. Yeah, and it's pretty significant. And, and it impact, impacts so many aspects of your life. So whether it's your, your food, your education, yeah. your access to health care, your housing or living in an area that's safer yeah. or more affluent, like it, it makes it sense. Does. In the U.S., top 20% wealth versus bottom 20% wealth, the difference is about nine years. Okay. And then if you spread it further, top one to lowest one? Top one to 15, lowest one. Yeah, right? 15, years. 15 difference years. In men, and I think it's a little bit less of a difference in women. Okay. But that's a huge difference. Yeah. And then education as well. You know that the higher the education, the longer you live. So, sir, so Pink Floyd kind of got it wrong when they say we don't need no education. We don't need no education. Yeah, no, you definitely need education. Okay. If you, if you want to live longer. Sorry, Pink Floyd. It turns out to be that way. Okay. Okay, so money, education. And, and like we talked about before, the hard part about a lot of these things is you don't necessarily get to pick them. No. Like you can you know, work hard and obviously um, yeah. accomplish things by yourself and get to school and whatever, but but you are, it's hard. No, it's hard. so yeah, these social determinants of health, some things you can control, some things you can't, yep. some things you can debate. Hey, maybe we can control this, maybe we can't. Right, okay. Next one is, it's kind of obvious, access to healthcare. Okay. All right, access to people like you and I. But it's not just living close to a hospital. No, it's access to good healthcare. Right, All okay. right. And that, that that's a huge topic because um, to access healthcare, you have to have the time. You have to be able to take time off work to right. go to healthcare. Um, and the the, dis, the discrepancy there is actually pretty alarming too. So how can we look at it? If we look at, say, uh, someone in the U.S. with health insurance versus someone in the U.S. without health insurance, yep, the life expectancy difference is huge there. Um, like twenty five percent, about twenty five percent difference, and why? Because with access to health insurance, then you get access to management of chronic disease. Yep, you get access to screening tests, yep. and you get access to treatments. And also, people that have less access and less money often are more or less trusting of healthcare. Yep. So then they don't seek care. So they just present with more advanced diagnoses that yep. become harder to manage, or even maybe not possible to manage. I don't trust you. I don't trust you either. Right. So that access to healthcare is a huge topic yeah. and a huge issue. And so we we'll think, well, wait a minute. How about in Canada? We yeah, must, everyone's got healthcare here. We must be rocking so everybody's in here, sent. right? No. Okay. We're pretty good. Okay. Our, uh, the average life expectancy in Canada is like in the low 80s, I think 82, 83. Yeah. Average life expectancy in the USA is in the high 70s, maybe 79 or something like that. Yeah. So that's on average. Okay. So yeah, the, the access to healthcare has increased our average life expectancy. However, within Canada, we still have our own problems. The variations are not as large as in the US. Okay. However, we have a big problem with our First Nations population. Yep. Compared to non-Indigenous populations, the variation in life expectancy there is alarming, yeah. it's big. And you'd think it's getting better, no. it's getting worse. With it's awareness, worse. it's actually getting worse. The discrepancy is getting larger. So we yeah. have a big problem within our own country, even though we have socialized medicine and everyone has supposedly has access to health care. Right. But because they're particularly more rural often, off more that rural, makes it hard. there's a distrust yep. in health care. Yeah. Validated distrust. And government for sure. Government. And we're trying to make it better, but yeah. it turns out it's getting worse. Okay. So that's access to health care. Okay, number four. Social connection and chronic stress. Yeah. We've talked about that in our pillars of health oh. before, right? They say that grossly the, underestimated and underappreciated, I think, for decades. Yeah, I've heard some studies that say that loneliness, severe loneliness, is about the same as smoking 15 cigarettes per day. That's a lot. That's a lot. So the really, you don't want to smoke cigarettes alone. No, you get a double whammy there. You definitely don't. Okay, but that is that is a huge impact on your health. Right. And I think it ties into some of the other stuff too, because depending where you live, you know, maybe yeah. there aren't like community programs or maybe there aren't people around, like if you're more rural sure. or isolated, if you don't have a car or whatever. Yeah, these things are all intertwined, these social determinants, right? Yeah. And the chronic stress, which you kind of lumped in there with, with loneliness and social connection, that can increase your risk of heart disease by like 30%. Yeah. So social connection, chronic stress. One of those social determinants. And I think, ironically, in 2026 now, mm -hmm. never been more lonely. No. Nope. And never been less connected. Well, despite being phone. more connected on the stupid phone. Yeah. Well, that's probably what a lot of people are watching us. Right I know. Now. But it's, it's, different. it's different. Talking it's different. with docs doesn't count. That's, that's right. social connection. Right? That's right. Because you leave comments. That's right. Leave comments to overcome that. I like okay. it. Okay, okay number five. We're trying five. to answer a lot of those comments. We do. We're doing our part to help that social determinant of health. I like it. Okay, give us the last one. The food and food environment, which makes sense. 
So it's not just it's not just more kale and broccoli, no. which is part of it. Part of it, true. But access to food in a in a, a multi different level. So say first of all, where you live. Yeah. Well, what's your access to food situation? Yeah, look at the extreme example. Let's say you live in a part of the world, a developing country, where there's drought, where there's just no food availability. Your yep. life expectancy goes way down. That's obvious, yes. right? However, it's even much more nuanced and much more subtle than that. Even within a developed nation, access to food can vary greatly. For sure. All right, they call it a food desert if you live in an urban area and you're more than a mile away from a grocery store. Do they know that because you can't grow a lot of food in the desert? Is that no. why they call it a desert? Do you I think it just means, I think it's probably they meant to say dessert. <laughs> spell it. I always get those wrong. Maybe. How to spell that too. extra S. Leave a comment <laughs> on when to spell it as desert or dessert. Fair. I must have lost a lot of marks all through grade school with that. Did you have a lot of papers that included the word dessert or desert? Like, I like yeah. to include both those, yeah. A okay. lot of geography uh, and a lot of science. So, um, or if you live in a rural area and you're 10 miles away, right? because you need a car. Who, do you have access to a car? Do you have enough money to get this food? So food, or do you live next to a McDonald's or do you live next to a farmer's market? Right. There's two different food available. How often have you been downtown in some big city and you step outside your hotel, you're like, oh, I kind of want a snack. And you're like, yeah. well, there's no, A, there's no grocery store around. Mm -hmm. There may be a farmer's market, maybe for three months of the yeah. year in North America when the weather's okay, depending on where you live. Yeah. Instead, you're like, okay, there's a convenience store yeah. where you go get like a chocolate bar or a case of beer Bag or something, of chips. or a fast food restaurant, but there's not necessarily healthy no, choices. Not, there's not a lot of vegetable aisles. I think the other trouble too is that often the food that is worse for you is cheaper and more yeah. calorically dense. You're like, yeah. listen, I just need some calories. And that's all part of the food environment. Yeah. And that can increase your risk of obesity, diabetes, sure. depending on your food environment. And it's not your fault. No. Like, you know I mean, I think like we've, yeah. we've, so we're trying to shift some of the blame away from people saying, well, listen, you're just doing your best. And you're like, well, I, there's no food around, but I got to eat. Yeah, that so is gonna... such a good point because very often influencers, doctors, whoever's yeah. talking to you about your lifestyle is making it sound like it's your fault. Yeah, just make food. Okay. Eat more broccoli. Right? But maybe you you live in a place where the social determinants are such that you can't access a gym. You can't access food. You can't access You're in a broccoli care. desert. Broccoli desert. Kale desert would be even <laughs> you wish even worse. <laughs> you I'd love it. I know you kale know you right? I had a kale Caesar the other day. You did? Yeah, I did. And at a restaurant, it was good. It was okay. good. I think they really massaged the kale appropriately. It's key. But still not as good as the lettuce one. Right? Yeah, but better for you. Like way better for you. Yeah. Like not even close. Arguably. Like you not no not arguably. You yeah. put romaine against kale. Kale will body slam it every time. But it led to loneliness because no one would <laughs> no one would talk to me when I ordered the kale salad because of the garlic. Because of the kale. <laughs> All right. So these are the social determinants of health. Can you control them? I don't know. Can you control where you live? Can you control your income, education, access to health care? Can you control your social connectedness? Can you control your food environment? So, so I'd say sometimes a little bit. Yeah. But I'd say on a personal level, I think, or an individual level, that's tricky. But I think as a group or as a population, yeah. if we're aware of it, maybe we can try to impact like policy change. If you live in a democracy, yes. then yeah. You want to look for a leader who, A, knows what the social determinants of health are, right. and B, cares what the social determinants are, of health are. Right, so don't, don't uh, cut the park down. Yeah. Cut all the trees in the park down and build a bunch of office buildings, or right? McDonald's. We need affordable housing. We need green space. We need safe environments. We need to have emergency Community services center. available, community centers for not only exercise, but also for education and for just hanging out and having friends. Social connectedness, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the way the social determinants of health can play in a role. And right. personally, you know, if you're now trying to figure out, should I keep going to school? Yeah. Should I drop out in grade 11? No. Try staying in school as much as you can. Try and increase your education as much as you can. Yeah. Try and get a decent job. These are the kind of social determinants that can help you live longer. And, and we recognize it is, I feel like maybe never been harder for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Right? Ironically. More, more isolated, more stressed especially financially, more difficult time kind of meeting the daily financial needs, harder to get a good job that has longevity and maybe benefits or whatever. Yeah. It, it's really it's really hard right now. You're so. getting replaced by AI. Like we are as they oh, make man. AI. I get another email from someone saying, hey, there's a weird channel with you and Paul. Or, no, not both of us. No, it's, it's always separate. just one of us. Yeah. That's how you know it's, it's that's how you know fake. it's fake. If it's only one of us. If it's only one of us, it's AI, right? So as annoying. of today's date. Anyway, now you know 
If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment on your thoughts on the social determinants of health. If you have any ideas on how to make this better for all of us. Yeah, and remember, you are in charge of your own health, but you may not be in charge of the social determinants of health. There you go. We'll see you next time.